I would like to welcome everybody to the first West Quarter Flood Study Public Information event. Uh, the purpose of this event is to describe the work carried out to date to understand the flood risk from the West Quarter burn in the area. Um, the purpose of this event is to describe the work carried out to date to understand the flood risk from the West Quarter burn in the area and to describe the next steps for the project. There will be another event at some point in 2022 to describe potential options for flood protection in the area, but today we're just sort of looking at the steps we've got to so far, understanding the flood risk. Before we get started, there's a few housekeeping things to mention. This event is being recorded and will hopefully be hosted on the Falkirk Council website for those that have been unable to attend to be able to watch at their leisure. I'm hoping it's going to work. It says it's working. Uh, could everyone accept the presenters please stay on mute so that we can keep the background noise to a minimum. Uh, we're hoping to have a short question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So if you do have any questions, can you just put them in the chat? Please. Um, also, if you have any technical issues, if you put it in the chat, then hopefully we can help you out. Well, we're not exactly that tech savvy, so it might not work. <laughs> the agenda is short and sweet for this. We're going to have a, I'm going to do a short bit of background on the project from myself, followed by a presentation from ACOM. Um, and then uh, where the Falkirk Council's term consults of flooding and drainage, and then we'll have the Q&A session. So if everybody's here now, um, ready to, we'll make a start. I should try and share my screen. It wasn't working earlier. Um, I'll try this time. Right, hopefully you can see that. So I've lost my notes. Right. So as you Go on, As you're aware, the Langton Road area and surrounding areas suffered from several flooding events over the last few years. In response to this, Falkirk Council set out an action in the 4th Estuary Local Flooders Management Plan to carry out a flood study of the area. To fulfil this action, Falkirk Council commissioned consulting engineers ACOM to start the study in the spring of 2021. It is important to note that this flood study is only looking at the flood risk from the West Quarter Burn. The flood risk from surface water flooding will be looked at in the future through a surface water management plan. Now, uh, technical issues on my side. So hopefully that gives you some a little bit of background and I'll hand over to Hannah from ACOM to introduce the project team, go through the work carried out to date to understand the flood risk in the area and to describe the next steps for the project. Thank you very much, Lee, for that introduction. Yep, I'll just share my screen now for the presentation. Can everyone see that OK? Yeah. Thank you. Yep, great. OK, so um, I'm Hannah. I'm the project manager on the project and joining me today is Scott, our engineer, and Morag, our technical lead on the project. OK, I'll hand over to Morag. wait for the slides to catch up. OK, um, so Lee's already spoken about some of the uh, project background, um, but just a, another quick summary of that. So the reason we're here today um, and undertaking this study is that West Quarter um, has been identified as a potentially vulnerable area by SEPA. Um, and this is based on their high level mapping that is that covers the country um, and also the flood history of the area. Um, and as Lee said, Falkirk Council commissioned ACOM um, to undertake the flood study in West Quarter. The purpose of this public exhibition um, is to gather local information from you guys. Um, so that could be flood history or your views um, and thoughts on the flood mapping and the options then that we have identified. Um, it's to bring you up to date with what's been done so far 
um, and provide a bit of an introduction um, about the options that we've looked at for minimising or reducing the flooding in West Quarter. So flood study follows kind of set stages. Um, the first one being the data gathering stage where we look at flood history, um, previous studies and gather any relevant information that we'll use for calculating the flows or developing the hydraulic model. Um, that's the model of the river. Um, stage two, where we develop an understanding of the catchment. So that's where we look in more detail about the area that contributes to the flow to West Quarter. Um, and we do things like undertake um, a site visit. Stage three, um, which is what we're currently in just now, is the flood modelling and mapping stage. And this is where we develop a, a computer model of the river to simulate how flooding occurs in the area. Um, this is just led on from this uh, public exhibition event now, which is sat in between stage three and four. So stage four, um, which we're just about to move on to, is the baseline assessments and option development um, and appraisals. So this will be where we identify options to minimise or reduce flooding um, and appraise them based on economical and environmental aspects. Um, and the final stage is where we undertake the reporting um, and set out recommendations um, that have come from the flood study. So a little of the flood history, which I'm sure some of you will, will already know, um, we've identified sort of three major events that have occurred. Um, the first being October 1990, where there was prolonged heavy rain causing the burn to overtop. Um, there were reports of tree debris in some of the bridges, which may have uh, increased the flooding um, and properties were affected in this event. November 2015, um, again, flooding noted at properties on Langdon Road. Um, and the most recent one, the August 2020, where extensive flooding um, from a short spell of intense rainfall. Um, and again, properties were affected. Um, so part of this um, feedback and Q&A session, um, we would like if anyone else has photos or a history of any other events that would be really useful in helping us um, increase our certainty in the outputs of this flood study. So if you do have any information, then you can let us know um, at the end. Um, a little summary of the West Quarter Burn catchment itself. Um, it originates at Shield Hill um, and flows northeast through West Quarter onto Grangemouth and then into the fourth. Um, so you can see from the image here that West Quarter is at the right hand side of the image um, and the catchment is approximately 18 kilometres squared um, to this point. The Glen Burn is the main tributary of this water course and this also has an overflow from the Union Canal um, which has been included in our modelling um, as a, a significant inflow in addition to the natural catchment. So the hydraulic model um, is the model that we build. It's a computer model um, to represent the, um, the river and the topography in the area. Um, and this allows us to um, predict where and when flooding um, will occur. So we have 46 channel cross sections um, that were surveyed as part of this commission, extending over 1.8 kilometres off the burn in the immediate vicinity of West Quarter. Um, this model of the river is linked to the ground surface, um, which um, represents the floodplain, and this is based on the Scottish Government LIDAR data. Um, so the linked, the linked 1D, 2D model that we've created here is created in Flood Modeler 2 Flow, um, which is the sort of industry standard software for this sort of project. Uh, this modeling allows us to see which areas might be at risk, um, and it also allows us to see um, when flooding occurs and how water can naturally drain away from the area. Uh, okay, and just a brief um, sort of summary of the, the terminology when we're talking about um, flood events. 
So we'll be describing events as annual exceedance probability events, AEP events. Um, and this just refers to um, describing the size of a flood. Um, so it's how likely it's going to occur in a given year. For example, a 1% AEP flood is a flood that has a 1% chance of occurring or being exceeded in any year. Um, and that is relevant for each year as it progresses. So the larger um, numbers will occur more frequently and the smaller numbers will occur less frequently. I'll just pass you on to Scott now, who will um, describe some of the outputs of the modelling and some of the options that we're going to be considering. Thank you. So um, on your screen at the moment is the flood map for the 2% AEP event. So this is an event that is likely to happen or is a 2% likelihood of happening in any given year. So from the flood map, you can see in the kind of pur pink purple area, these are kind of the 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 deep kind of areas and the the light blue is the more shallow areas. In areas that are white, um, the model is showing that there's no flooding here at this event. So during this event, really at the beginning, uh, water begins to back up behind Pullman Road culvert, flooding the north bank of the river. And then later on in the event, uh, the water level increases um, and spills onto Langton Road at multiple locations along the burn. Um, and once on Langton Road, um, the flooding flows east uh, along the floodplain uh, and then not going back into the burn until just upstream of Pullman Road culvert. So really during this event, there's quite substantial flooding at the east end of Langton Road, but the west end isn't really too affected. Um, and now on the next slide, I think we'll see just a less fre frequent event. So this is the 0.5% AEP event, so it has a 0.5% likelihood of happening in any given year. And as you can see, the flood outputs here are much more vast. Um, there, there's more pink and purple areas, so the, the flooding is much deeper and it's really now starting to affect the west end of Langton Road. Um, again, at the beginning of the event, uh, water backs up behind Pullman Road cover, flooding the north bank. And then during the event, water level increases and spills over at multiple other locations along the burn. Um, this is usually at the upstream ends of the road bridges. Um, and again, once on Langton Road, it flows eastwards, um, not entering back into the culvert, so just upstream of Pullman Road culvert. So really during this event, there's quite widespread flooding across um, West Quarter. And I should note that these are just two of the events um, shown at the moment. Uh, however, we have models, a range of different return periods or range of different AEP events. Um, so we really know, understand the flood risk in West Quarter. One to note in particular is the 10% AEP event, um, which um, flooding starts to begin at properties. So I can go into the next slide now. So now we've looked at the flood modeling outputs and we understand a bit more about the flood risk in West Quarter. Uh, the next steps are really to propose some mitigation options that could be used to uh, prevent some uh, flood risk in West Quarter. So the options on your screen at the moment are uh, some engineering examples. Um, so you've got flood embankment and flood walls. These are used to contain the water in the burn and to prevent it getting onto the floodplain. You have flood storage areas um, and these are usually used upstream um, to store the water and then this will limit the water level downstream. Um, and from the modeling outputs, we can see that really at the upstream of the bridges is where some of the, the flow enters or leaves the burn um, and goes onto Langton Road. So there's a possibility we could do some something to the bridges here um, to minimize the flood risk. And then really the last option could be uh, property level protection. This is really protecting the property itself from flooding. Um, so using barriers at doors and air brick covers to prevent flooding to get into the property. However, flooding would still exist on the floodplain. So these are now some natural flood management examples. These measures would really be used in the upstream catchment and are used to slow the flow in the burn. Um, these examples maybe are less impactful at less frequent events. So if these were to be put forward, they would likely be used in conjunction with other options, um, whether that be another fl a natural flood management option or 
um, an engineering option. So some examples of these are leaky barriers, um, floodplain tree planting, wetland enhancement, understory planting and uh, agricultural management. So these options we've looked at just there really make up the long list of options. Um, so everything we could think of that could potentially um, reduce the flood risk in West Quarter. And from this, we will then produce a short list and this will be identified really through feedback from stakeholders and um, from yourselves. So this short list options will then be appraised um, based on technical, economic, environmental and social benefits. And this will really lead us onto a preferred option. Um, and this will make up our recommendations for managing flood risk in the West Quarter. And I should note that there is a future event um, which will which will show the preferred option and the decision making process uh, to get there. So at the bottom of the screen, there's some contact information. So if you do have any comments or feedback on any of the slides we've shown today, uh, whether it be the flood mapping or the options, um, there's an email there where you can get in touch. So I'll just pass you back on to, to Hannah. Great, um, thank you very much everyone for listening. I'll maybe just leave that slide up for a little bit longer, just in case anyone wants to note that down, but we'll obviously circulate it as well after the meeting. Um, and then I'll hand you back to Lee. We'll meet myself. Thank you, Hannah. Scott Morag for the presentation. Um, that's it from us. It's now over to you and what questions you would like to ask. I've seen Councillor Nimmo's got one in the chat. Um, if people don't want to use the chat, we can use the hand function. I just didn't want to get it too out of control with everyone trying to talk over each other. So um, we'll start with Councillor Nimmo's. Uh, do you want, sorry, Councillor, would you like to speak uh, your question? Or? Thanks, Lee. Just on the back of the question that I posed in the, the chat facility there. Obviously, the last flooding episode, I think you said, happened back in 2019. Is that correct? Uh, that was a surface water episode. It wasn't a. Right. That, a that, was the last, that was the last incident. I think there was others after uh, that. Was August, August 2020, I think there was a yeah, fairly significant one. We'd spoken to yeah. somebody when we were on our site visit who'd sent yeah. all those photos that we have, yeah. Yeah, that was my the last major one from the burn. Right, my concern is that obviously the weather isn't too bad at the moment, but if we were to be the subject of heavy rain overnight tonight, what measures has Falkirk Council put in place to, to mitigate the flooding? Uh, we've got emergency plans in place, um, where to put sandbags, where to pump from. Um, obviously, we well, we monitor weather forecasts, we get flood guidance statements from the Met Office and SEPA to give us forewarning of any potential trouble. And then we let the duty supervisors that are working out of hours know that they're going to happen and or could happen. And then we obviously react based on our emergency plans. I take it that wasn't in place leading up to the last episode then, or there would have been measures put in place to, to help residents. Um, we didn't, I don't believe we got a uh, forewarning of the storm. The storm was quite an extreme storm and it didn't last very long. It was a, a summer thunderstorm. So I don't think we got any forewarning from the Met Office other than there might be something happening somewhere because you can't um, forecast for thunderstorms very well, but like locally. You can only say some thunderstorms will happen at some point across your area. So we didn't have any specific locational information and then so therefore we're then re uh, relying on residents to let us know which obviously they did at the time which was good and we got out as soon as we could okay thanks lee uh, does anybody else want to put their hand up ask a question yeah uh, Got Alex. Just don't let me unmute and mute him. Oh no, Alex is gone. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, sorry about this. It's not letting me unmute people. Sorry, can you hear me? 
So, Alex. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sorry. Um, Morag, I was a person who, who met you on site last year, uh, you and your colleague, and, and sent you the photographs, and I hope they've, they've turned out uh, informative. A couple of questions for you. Um, can the burn be diverted? Can it be um, for, further upstream uh, at the Union Canal? It's not something that we've looked at. I mean, I think diverting something from the Union Canal would mean diverting such a large stretch. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be feasible. Um, we did look at um, realigning more locally within West Quarter, as in the, the more like the playing field kind of area um, on the right hand bank. Um, and I think just due to the the levels, um, because it's quite a bit higher on that right hand bank, it was unlikely to work. Um, I think it's something that if people feel would be a good option on a smaller scale, as in not from the Union Canal, then it's something that we can have another look at if if it's felt that that might be something useful. But I think um, a larger scale diversion is probably unachievable. No, I just take, just take some of the water away from the, from the burn, diverting at a, a higher level uh, further up. Uh, up the glen or further and and towards um, Hall Glen or something, divert it there so the water doesn't come down. The other, the other thing is, can it can the water uh, can the burn be dredged? It's an option that will be on our long list as part of the the appraisal work, and then it goes through um, uh, an appraisal process. It looks like the economic and the the legal and the environmental elements of both. So yeah, that will be within the long list. Okay, so there, there are a couple of things. Um, I don't know if you know, Scott. You mentioned the the, the problems down at the at Pullman Road. There, the there's still the water is still flooded down at Pullman Road. It has is never there's a fencing round about it, and uh, to, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any work done. Falkirk Council employees put work round about it, uh, fence round about it, and it's still still full of water right at the bridge. Where the bridge, uh, do you know the Barrow Bridge at all, right, Pullman Road? On the left bank. Yes. Yeah. Right, right to the east of the village. Yeah. And another thing is, um, during the floods, there've been there've been uh, floods recently, and just at, as you go over the first bridge at Langton Road, to the left, the residents there are are scared because the the Falkirk Council. Uh, have pumped the, the drains out a few times, but the flood workmen out or to say that they, they can't find the drains. There's no drains there. There's there's the, the gullies are there, but the drains have been demolished. So they're they're panicking in case there's a heavy flood again because there's no drains to take the water away. Yeah, Where about was this? Sorry, that's as easy as you go over the bridge. You come down Kerhouden Road. You go over the mm -hmm. first bridge. Yeah. First left, first left, and it's the first two houses on the right hand side. Yeah, I guess that's it's probably more of a question for Lee and maybe more specifically well, surface think, water. Um, so it's more than surface water. There's no drains there. The drains have collapsed. We can't find mm -hmm. the drains. So is that something that's ongoing, Lee, just now? So do you know about it? Uh, we know there's issues with the road drainage. The road drainage. The road maintenance teams have been doing some investigations, mm -hmm. but what we're concerned about is the burn itself. I will take your comments on board and pass them on. But, but we're... Uh, after after the 12th of August last year, I spoke to the uh, Folk at Council uh, and they asked them when the last time the drains were, were cleaned. And I've been a resident down there for a long time and I've never seen them cleaned since one of the local residents retired. And that was maybe about 15 years ago. I've never seen the gullies getting cleaned up until the floods. Okay, as I said, we'll take on, we'll pass you on your comments to the roads maintenance team. Um, this is this today. I mean, that's good information, but this discussion is more about the burn itself. Right. Uh, okay, that's, the, uh, that's all. Thanks. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Brian, you're, do you want to come in? But you might have to unmute yourself because it's not letting me unmute you for some reason. There you go. <laughs> Hi there. It's just a quick question. We, this house here, we're actually in the, the, the major part of the flood zone. 
the one that he's been shown in pink and purples. The, um, we've actually got a shoes drain out the back. Now, any sort of like rain at all, we get, like, your garden is flooded. We've actually had human, right. and human excrement and toilet paper is still all lying out the back garden. Now, we've, we've asked the Falkirk Council to come and look at it. They came out um, <clears throat> and I've actually taken the fence down so they can look at it. And it says, they usually come out, well, the last time it says, there's no rain and there's nothing we can do about it because it wasn't, it wasn't flooding. They have actually got pictures, videos, everything of it. So what's going to happen with that? Or we here go to keep clean our garden every time it rains? Now, it's, this is not just like heavy rain, it's any rain. That's, you've spoken to housing, your housing technical officer about that. That's all comes to the street drains. Right. Um, because we're on the opposite side of what Alex was talking about just the, uh, a minute ago, right. we're on the opposite side, we're on the right-hand side of the dead end street. Um, we were highly affected last year. Um, so the drains can't cope here. One of the drains actually poured water out because they get diverted into the burn. There's a burst pipe that's been reported even by Councillor Adana McHugh um, on the other side of the burn, which is no helping the, the flooding issue either. So these drains can't cope in the street. They back up into this drain in my neighbour's garden which then flows into our garden, where we have actually got to have sandbags seven days a week, 24 hours a day, at our back door to prevent it coming into the house, which is still entering the building through the vents in the building. And you've, you've reported that to the housing technical officer? It's been reported numerous times, the same with the drainage issues, um, the water actually coming out drains, the um, bush pipe at the side of the burn where it actually comes off the road, the, um, is on the first bridge that Alex was talking about. Um, uh, that actually comes to the, ma the road, pouring into the burn. That's burst. It's actually a fountain when we get heavy rain. I've sent pictures. Adana McHugh has sent pictures to the council. Everything I photographed, videoed and everything as well. And nothing's been done about it, which puts us more at risk. OK, again, uh, we'll talk to housing. Um, again, it's not part of the scope of this work here, uh, but it's good information. Thank you. Council well, just another thing. See right. the first right. bridge that come down Carhoudon Road. The, the flooding last year, it was actually backing up on the left hand side. On the right hand side of, the, of that bridge, we still had about, what, about three feet mm -hmm. of the, the actual banking left before it was flooding. It actually flooded from the left hand side, the side that Alec was on about. It flooded from there because it was hitting the bridge. The water was hitting the bridge there and backing up and overflowing on the left hand side. But over on the right hand side of the bridge, there were still loads of room. Could you know, hey, demol the demolish that bridge and put in the humpback bridge in, it makes it a wee bit easier and lets the, the flow of the water like use the capacity of the banking. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, that's something we are looking at, um, either removing and replacing or um, improving the bridge structure. So that's good information because that's basically what our modelling is showing as well, that it backs up behind that yeah. bridge and the other bridge and it spills uh -huh. upstream of it on the left bank and that's where it first spills. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly, yeah. yeah so that's, exactly, that, that's something we will be looking at because it does provide a constriction within the channel, which is part of the problem. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you, Mungai. Right, that's that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McHugh. No. And you'll have to unmute yourself because it's not allowing me to unmute, unmute you for some reason. That's done. Okay, thanks, Lee. I've put in the chat there about how uh, much maintenance was has been done to the burn, uh, say, in the last five, ten years because obviously the residents um, in the West Quarter area have regularly complained to me about how the burn is not maintained. Um, there's vegetation overgrown, there's debris, and they believe that that's added to the, the, the water buildup and the problem. But what I want to do is take you back to um, August 2020, when the, that was horrendous. And I would like uh, maybe yourself, Morag, to explain, was the flood 
because the burn burst its banks or was the flood because of surface water? <coughs> My dog decides to join in right at the right times. Because of surface water that had nowhere to go due to poor maintenance over the years of the drainage in the area. I know there was a whole load of um, different things all came together, water planes rising, you know, and a, a, a massive um, downfall of rain um, at the same time. So we need to clarify exactly whether it was the flood was caused by the burn bursting, or was it because water surface due to uh, um, drainage issues? That's the first. That's the first thing for me because obviously this is to discuss the the burn this evening. Yeah. So yes. Any problems with drainage and uh, and that the the residents that are getting on a, a regular basis every time it rains is obviously not going to be discussed this evening. But that's one of the first things that I would like to know. You know, and I would like that to be explained. I've been having meetings since last August, uh, as some of the residents that are on screen will know. You know, with, with various people um, in the last year, year and a half almost now, and there has been real poor. Obviously, we have a pandemic on our hands, so we've not been able to have proper public meetings. And as you can see tonight, there's no many residents on because it's, a lot of people find it difficult uh, to have these online meetings. So I have been asking for update for our residents because every time it rains now, we've got people in their houses panicking. We can't go on like that. And if this is related to climate um, change and the, the, and global warming and all the rest of it, you know, we then need to really seriously look at putting plans in place to protect this area because it is a valley and the water's going to flow down. Water will get, as you all know, water will get where it wants to go, you know, whatever we put in place. So we need to seriously look at putting plans in place to protect these residents because we can't have them living like that. Yeah, no, I think... <laughs> in there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, yeah, I think, like like you said, you know, uh, due to the the ground surface and it being in a valley, it's um, it's a natural floodplain, unfortunately. Um, and I think with your, your question in relation to is it... Was it the August event because of the burn or because of the drainage? Um, I can't say for certain because we don't have gauge data in the the catchment. So I can't say that the August 2020 event was a specific event that ties up with an event that we have like listed within the mapping. So I can't say exactly what it is, but I would say it. I would be relatively confident that it was as a result of the heavy rainfall which caused the burn to overtop. The drainage, if there's issues with the drainage, which it sounds like there are quite a few issues with the drainage in the area, it won't have helped. But I think that amount of water and seeing the photos and the videos, I would be relatively confident that it was the majority of it was caused by the water course rather than the drainage. Um, but again, it, it will have, they, both of them will have bounced off each other basically you know the, the drains will have been very full slash they're not there or collapse you know all of those things will have fed into it and um, but that volume of water would we would anticipate based on the rainfall from nearby gauges would have caused a large event like we saw so the issue then becomes where does the water go because if you what i'm led to believe the drains flow into the burn so if you've got drains yeah taking water, flowing back into the burn that is flooding back again. Where, because at that time back in August, there was literally nowhere to put the surplus water. Exactly, so, yeah. And obviously that, I take it that will be part of, of, of your study. Um, yeah. To, you know, where can, that, where can the water go? Because, well, as I've already explained, yeah, I think that's that is an issue when we've got um, combined systems or surface water systems is when there's a large event, there's a lot of rainfall and that causes the river to be high. Um, and if it's outfallen into the river, it's got to the pipes have got to be at a certain level and then that tends to be in the river. Um, and I think that's a problem that 
that most rivers have unless you know unless it the pipes out fall into the sea and it's above sea level then that is an issue with with drains backing up and um, so I think the options that we're looking at just now are specifically related to the burn um, and I think we said that there was a separate surface water management element that will be progressing at some point um, as we you know if we identify a, a suitable mitigation measure for the burn um, mm. the the drainage will be fed in at the detailed design stage because the drainage is quite complicated so that doesn't get assessed right now um, but they do feed in together so they, they will be assessed together if if a suitable option is is taken forward mm. and that That's surface water management plan will also feed into that as well to make sure nothing is made worse by doing something to something else if that makes sense make it something else and cause an effect on something else yeah 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 exactly and, uh, and lee can i just ask you one last question why are the residents in Langton Road having sewage problems when it's when it, when it rains? Is there a, is there a drainage connection? Because I assume that obviously a sewage pipe would be a total separate from our gullies and our, our, our street drains. But we've got if we, if we've got you know human excrement floating around when we get heavy rain in that area. There must be some kind of, I don't know, mixed mixed jury drainage or something there that needs to be looked at. Well, that, that's the issue. It's all the old drainage in Falkirk is all combined sewers. Mm. So any of the rainwater or the burn water going into the gullies themselves will go into the sewage drain because it's just one pipe rather than modern, modern estates now where you have two pipes and the surface water is kept away from the fowl. And so the, the rain and the burn water can't get into the foul water to make them surcharge and pop. But unfortunately, these old areas, they just have the one pipe and everything goes into it and it can't cope with the water. I wouldn't have thought that West Quarter was that old. Compared it doesn't to it's it's very old, unfortunately. Yeah, it must be. So yeah, that's I think something that not, again at another maybe at another meeting we'll we'll, we'll need to to look at the, the the whole drainage system side of things. Unfortunately, that's Scottish Water, not us. And although we have discussions with Scottish Water, we can't get them. You know, we can't like tell them to do something. If you see what I mean? You know, we can't you know demand things. They have their own business business case, and yeah. they have their own flooding numbers that they have to cut down on. Yeah. I think partly the area down by Parliament Road, that area that's permanently water, yeah. that's in dispute about whether that's a Scottish water issue or a Falkirk Council issue because there's a Scottish water pipe right underneath that bit of water. Yeah, and and that is, sorry to cut you off there, but that is one of our real frustrations and people do not know who to contact and you get told you know and it's one of my huge frustrations because you get you, you get passed around it's almost like pass the parcel because and really, to, the residents are no interested in who's responsible when they're panicking about water coming through the front door yet again they just want somebody to act and obviously we want that to be put in place and we want it to be done properly so this so we can prevent this happening in the future Thanks. Yeah, we 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 have the same <laughs> same issues about people taking responsibility from our side. It's like uh, it can be very frustrating. Uh, sorry, Janet, do you want to come in now, Janet Shear? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to say I've lived down here all my life, and about. Before this occasion, about 25 years ago, that's when the, the burn flooded. Previous to that, the burn was dredged every three years. It was cleaned out. The cutter for the grass cutter used to come round, use a big arm, cut down the edges of the grass, and we had beautiful big trees in it as well. They were all taken away and still a little ones put down, and it never gets cleaned anymore. So wouldn't that be something to go back to some basics? to get things sorted properly. 
Uh, yeah, we, so in, in part we will be looking at, at dredging and maintenance. That is part of the, the stuff we're looking at. I think because of climate change, it, it now there is just more water and there is more flow, so you yeah, would expect sorry. things to flood more recent, more frequently. I know there's more water, but that's nothing to do with getting it dredged, whether no. there's more water or no. If it was cleaned properly the way it used to be done when I was a little girl, then maybe it would help a little bit, but yeah, nothing's ever touched. There, yeah, there's a possibility it could help, and it is something we will look into. Um, I guess what I'm saying is if if you've got double the flow and the capacity of the river is only increased by 10% by dredging, then, then there's still going to be, you know, Sometimes the water flooding. is to double the flow, because I always look at the, the water myself, and sometimes it isn't always double the flow. It's just it never gets cleaned which mm -hmm. it needs to. And I know the drains are a separate part, but if a drain's collapsed, if you don't fix that, you're going to keep getting the same issue. Yep. Yep. Oh. So is that not yeah. something you can consider? Yeah, no, it, it's something that's on the long list, yeah. yeah. On oh, a long list. Yeah. <laughs> Try and put it on a short list. <laughs> I happen to look yeah, so, so long list is just like yeah, all of the options we're going to look at. So we want to make yeah. sure we're not discounting anything at this stage. We're looking at absolutely everything you guys suggest. So yeah, it's definitely something we're going to look at. Okay. Okay, I've got a Bill Miser. Put his hand up. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, new to this. Uh, I'm just following up, with, following up on what Janet said. I hear a long list, I hear we're looking into this, we're looking into that. What's the plan in terms of the first action? How long does this looking into process going to take? Because if there is obvious quick fixes or things that may help in the short term, raising the bridge, dredging, historical dredging, why isn't that done? For me, dredging is a relatively easy thing to do. It's a back actor and a dumper truck to take the mud away. So, yes, it happened in 2020, August 2020. What's happening today? Are we still talking about it, or have we got an immediate quick fix action that can help in the short term? Yeah, we and don't have any quick fixes. And, and I'm, and I'm going to label everybody. I'm going to label Alan and uh, Dana and the, the people who are doing the survey as well, because you need... To, how long is it going to go on for? That's the whole point of the study is to find out yeah. what we can and can't and should Studies do. Studies can go on forever. The list can be added to, added to, added to without a decision. But unless we have the information, we can't make a decision. Yeah, but the, the, the residents, the locals are telling you that dredging used to happen. So that's 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 a well-known factor in flooding. So and it doesn't need a survey to do that. I know it needs money, but it doesn't need a survey. So why isn't a simple process like that being put in place? Fortunately, that's not how the system works these days. And that's what we're saying. There's a lot of talk. How long is the talk going to go on? When's the deadline for this survey? And when's the first action going to take place? Well, the study will go on till next spring or summer I think it is there uh, we still got a lot of work still to do and then it depends on what options become the best options depending on how the process goes on any further if we're talking about the flood walls or bridges getting moved or things like that then right. we need government money and obviously you can imagine getting government money isn't a fast option but if there are quick wins say dredging is one that is a quick win that we can do then we will implement that as soon as possible. But we need to have the science first to tell us what information and what always the appropriate options to take forward. Right, so there isn't a project timeline for this. It's going to finish sometime in, in, in uh, next spring and we're going to talk about it for longer and dredging is a recognised process and it may or may not get done. And probably say, in August, we're going to have another storm, potentially, because it's say, a bit of climate change, whatever, 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 and it could happen again based on the maps. So you're going to accept this. 
as I say, we need the information first before we can make decisions on what the best options are for the future. The best information you had was in 2020 when it flooded. And you've got residents there that are telling you that historically they never had any problems while there was dredging going on and other issues. You know, I'm not asking for the 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 surveys to lift the bridges or anything like that. Get a guy in with a back actor and a dumper truck and take the dredgings away. It's a simple fix. It may not solve Absolutely. all the problems. It's that simple. But um, we will look into it as part mm. of the list. This is what I keep hearing. We will look into it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Adama. Councillor McHugh, sorry. Lee, <laughs> if that's cool, Adana's fine. Um, <laughs> Lee, can you, do you have any information on what actually is getting done on the burn right now? Because I, I know there is work's getting done on the burn. I know there's a, a lot of uh, uh, um, repairing to be done to the, the, you know, the rock cage things. You can the technical name. I'm no technical. I don't need to be. <laughs> um, so can you maybe explain to people if you know what is actually happening with the burn at, um, at the minute? Um, and also, you know, we've got monitors since August last year. We have got monitors under the bridge, so we are uh, the are user are now aware as the as the bridge uh, water rises, you know, and it sets off alarms to uh, spring some folk into action. And uh, I believe, uh, well, I've certainly been told that we have had gully motors uh, down there um, cleaning things out, albeit there is uh, repairs that, that, that need to be done. But there is more action happening, just to give people more a bit more reassurance, there is a, a bit more action happening than there ever was before, you know. But I'm hearing what Bill's saying, and, and, and he's right to, uh, and everybody's right as far as people need to see a bit of action now. I mean, yes, we do need to look at uh, survey this whole issue um, as we go forward, and we need to get money for the Scottish government or somewhere um, to 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 properly, you know, going forward in the future because th this is going to happen more regular. So we're being told by the professionals. So obviously we need to be putting these things in place, but there needs to be. As Bill said, there needs to be something done um, Im immediately, and that's obviously what what, what I've been um, banging on about. What are we, what are we doing right now while we're waiting on gathering all the information? Because um, I believe photographs were sent quite some time ago. You know, there is there is plenty of documentation on the the flood of August 2020, and there's plenty more documentation from just even just what last month. Joanne, when we had more more flooding again, and it really it, it, it was a few a few hours of rain, but for a few hours of rain, it caused yet again panic and more uh, and more problems. Obviously, we need something done as soon as possible to give folk reassurance. So, do you know? Can you can you explain a wee bit of what's happening with the burning now? I know there's a lot of debris was uh, has been removed. Took a while. But it has been removed. But you know, as soon as we have another uh, deluge of water, then more debris gathers again. Yeah. So, as you say, the debris has been removed, and we monitor the burn on a regular basis to check for debris buildups and get them removed. The gabions, the stone baskets you're talking about, the gabions they've all been repaired, so that's done. And as you say, we've got a telemetry station now, which records water levels and gives us an alarm. And um, we've got an emergency plans and that's all we can do at the minute from the flooding teams side of things. Um, and Judith, just, are you saying that they've not been done? What, sorry? Judith? Are you shaking your head, Judith? I'm seeing Judith shake her head. Are you saying that the, the, the cage has not been repaired? I should hope so. I was there when it was being done. <laughs> I can't hear you. You're on mute. Judith, you're on mute. I can unmute you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Where they replaced the gabions with the, where the wooden fence came down. Sorry, my dog. Um, just further up, there's gabions on the other side that haven't been replaced. No, yes, they haven't been replaced because that's they the playing field. Yes, uh, they haven't been replaced because the that is just water going onto the playing fields, not the houses. Right, okay. 
and what about this side where the gabions haven't been replaced? Could the bank be built up because the water overtopped there badly? Well, it probably might. I mean, Maura can will look into this when she does further work, but it might be that the right hand bank, as we call it, into the playing fields could be lowered to allow water to flow into the oh, playing yes. fields rather than the village. Um, but it's, these are all kinds of the things that we'll look at as the study goes on. It might be we can like do some kind of storage area there, you know, for the water has somewhere to go and doesn't back up. But I think from what Scott was saying with the mapping, we might have issues because the water buildup is actually down the bottom of the Palmer Road end of the site and comes yes. back up into the village. So all these things have to be looked at in a holistic kind of view about how we do things. Do you want to photographs of, of it overtopping in 2020 just across the road where I was saying across the road from me? Because it overtopped and swirled all the way down the road and obviously contributed to the flooding in the houses down the road. Um, it washed cars away on the street. It was very well frightening. And yeah, Jenny, just... definitely any extra photos you can send us, it's it all just um, adds to our understanding. I, of, I have of sent that them at event. one point, but that was, you know, just a while ago. So where do I send it to? Um, so we'll send that email out, address out at the end of the meeting as well to make Brilliant. sure you've okay, all got it. Um, but yeah, you also did mention sort of raising the bank on one side and that would sort of we'd call that maybe like a flood embankment. And that's definitely yeah. on our list as well of options to take a look at. OK, so when would that happen? <laughs> so that's yeah part of all of our yeah. options to look at as part of the study. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the real takeaway from this is to for for our point of view is, you know, we really want to make sure we're suggesting the best option, which is, is really going to do the best. And we need to make sure we understand the processes properly um, so that the best option is looked at. You know, we're going to look at everything and and um, yeah, present the best option for you. OK, OK. It it nearly overtopped the bank there um, a month ago when it was was it end of Oct October. It nearly went over the bank there because I was keeping my eye on it because I was very worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Nimmo, can you come back in? Yep, thanks. Thanks, Lee. Just on the back of the discussion so far, I totally agree with what Bill was saying earlier on, and I, I sympathise totally with his position and the rest of the residents. Uh, to be quite frank, it doesn't seem to be a, a priority for the council, or this would have been done some time ago. Action should have been taken long before now. Uh, as far as the residents are concerned, they're living in a floodplain and they'll not be able to get insurance to cover them from that, because I've had the same problem down here in Grangemouth. I live right next to the, the Grange Burn, and I can't get flood insurance for my house down here. So West Quarter is going to be exactly the same. They're living in a flood plain, uh, and nothing seems to be getting done to mitigate the effects of the potential flooding. Like I said earlier, it could happen overnight tonight, and the same thing is going to happen again. And it's all down to whether Falkirk Council makes this a priority and takes urgent action to redress the problem. Now, I'll put another note on the, the chat function there. It might sound a bit extreme, but at the end of the day, if the burn could be piped and put underground through the West Quarter Valley, that would solve the flooding issue as far as the burn's concerned. It's not going to solve the drainage issue with the gullies and other things, the pipe work that's connected to that. But you have to bear in mind as well that Falkirk Council only has three gully motors. Now, they've been severely cut over the years, and the three gully motors that are out there are having to cover the whole of the Falkirk district. I've dealt with a lot of inquiries recently about drains not getting cleared. It is a massive issue throughout the whole of Falkirk. We just don't have the capacity to deal with it. But I really think Falkirk Council needs to prioritise this work as part of the flood protection uh, work that's ongoing. Now, that is something that's going to happen over the next so many years, but it needs to be effective now. There needs to be measures put in place now to help you lot. That's what it boils down to as far as I'm concerned, and it's just not happening. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. 
Uh, on the insurance thing, uh, have you come across Flood RE at all? Flood RE? They're a specialist service for giving flood insurance for areas where your properties cannot get normal flood insurance. I have looked into that, Lee, but you're going to pay over the odds for the insurance because of the flood risk. It's going to be an extortionate price. I know in my own case, my insurance for my, my house doesn't include anything like that at all because of the, the risk. Now, the Grange burn came within inches of flooding not that long ago, a few years back. And back in August 20, I was flooded, not because of the burn, but because of the drainage problems. The drains couldn't cope with the amount of rain that was falling. So it's the same type of issue that's happening right across Falkirk District in different areas. And we just don't seem to be doing anything to mitigate the problem. It's all very well us lot sitting here talking about it and discussing it tonight. But how's that helping people out there? It's not. I just said floodery shouldn't be charging your extortionate rates. It won't be as cheap as the price comparison websites, but they should be charging a reasonable price. Based on uh, the risk? Well, yeah, it's insurance. It's always based on what they perceive to be the risk. Uh, Brian, do you want to come back in? Sorry, you're on mute still. You yeah. Right, you tell me at what stage the um, alarms or whatever they are under the bridges actually activate, at what height that water level's got to get to before it alerts anybody? Uh, I couldn't tell you offhand, it's about, um, but it's roughly about a metre below the soffit of the bridge. Right, because um, just as Judith says, uh, last month, I think it was, I was on the phone to Adana, um, and we had half a foot to go under yeah. that bridge, and it could have been less than that, and we were at high risk then. And when we phone Falkirk Council and say that we are at flood stage, we get told, we don't even get sandbags issued to us, we've got to request them, and then we get told we'll get them when we can. Yeah, Which you'll only get sandbags in emergency conditions. Um, this was emergency conditions. They sent sandbags out in 2020 at 11 o'clock in the morning when the flood happened at five. Yeah. They're no good to us then. That is just beyond a joke. And then now, we it's the same every time we get heavy rain. The, the burn level actually this morning was pretty high when I went to work due to the rain we had during the night. So while you're at work, the amount of times I've had to come home due to heavy rain, because we're at risk, and the council don't do anything, they don't even come out and help us, and we're left to be in the same position we were last year. Well, hopefully, now with the alarms, hopefully with the alarms now, the duty officer, the out-of-hours duty officer, gets the alarms from the SLEM, so they will be able right. to do it, and then they them to make decisions about whether they should go and visit um, to check the burn themselves, check the weather forecast, all that kind of thing, and make an assessment. So what and they, are, they, they, take, they come Joanne, out? Joanne, they are. They, they are doing that. We can that they are doing that, but yes, it's, come when out, Joanne, um, it's when Joanne's and, seen that she's scared that her property is going to get damaged and she's no seeing that, and that's why the residents, we, we, we need some form of communication to reassure the uh, residents that there is someone out there and we are and they are monitoring it because because you can't kind of see it physically then you think but but there is there is some stuff going on but at the same time it can change so very quickly and a re a residents are being told oh no it's no, it's it's no hit that level yet and they're seeing it with their eyes because they're standing there watching that water rising you know, and maybe a computer system somewhere else is no red lights or no flashing as yet, but they can see that actually happening. So that's where I would like actually when when you know, because I mean technology these days, we know when water levels are going to be rising eh, or we have an estimate, then we really should have someone on the ground there reassuring people. And that's Sorry. something that obviously we'd have to go maybe into the study as well. We need more people on the ground to be assured. OK. Uh, Dorothy, put your hand up. 
Yeah, I would just like to say, um, in my household, we lost three cars. That's the three cars that we had to go and buy. So we're obviously paying these cars up still. So if this happens again, we're not in a position to go and get three cars to get to our work. At the time, I was living in the Park Hotel. I had a baby of 12 weeks old, and that had to come out of my own pocket. Like Bogart Council, I had no cooker, no washing machine, nothing for a baby. So if that happens again, what have I to do? Because we, can, we can't buy three new cars again because we're still paying off the ones we, we had to go and get. And that's not including anything in the house that we lost either. So, and the and price of the car insurance obviously has went up as well. Say so it's what we're here for. We're trying to do this flood study to try and stop this happening. But, but we keep hearing we trying to stop it. We need it to happen now. I mean, that was last August. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, but uh, there's a process we're having to go through. So have, have we just to wait? Like, are we just to lose another three cars? Have I just to go and live in the hotel again for three months? I How can't answer your question. I'm sorry. Uh, Bill, you've got your hand up again. Yeah, I do. I do, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I, I feel for you, Lee. I honestly do. I can appreciate the, the, the position you're in. But I listened to what Alan said about uh, uh, what the two, you two guys said about insurance. Insurance is the last resort. It doesn't compensate for all the, the heartache and the, that, that, the situation that that lady's just uh, presented. Uh, the trauma, waking up in the middle of the night with your socks soaking and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't. It doesn't help. And I understand what you're. I understand what you're saying about um, uh, doing the, the the timeline and the project and everything else. But in the survey, but say that aside. Dredging, if 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 that's a quick fix, dredging is maintenance. It's not a survey thing. That's that's maintenance of that flood floodplain. That you, the Falkirk Council have walked away from the maintenance aspect of that residential area. It shouldn't take a survey if it was done previously, and it was part of the solution, a recognised part of the solution. They've walked away from it. Now, for whatever reason, budget or the lack of flooding previously, but that's a maintenance issue. That isn't a survey or a long list issue. That's a maintenance issue. Even if you dredged underneath the bridges, uh, forget lifting and everything else, make it deeper underneath the bridges. That's a maintenance issue. That isn't survey or future um, climate issues or weather patterns or anything. That's just pure and simple maintenance that they've walked away from. Sorry, guys. Uh, we're now getting past seven o'clock. Um, we're only meant to finish it. <laughs> it's five past seven now. We're meant to have finished at seven. Uh, so if Anybody's got any burning, burning questions? Are probably best off closing the meeting for now. Yeah. Really, just to see, you can see the frustration, Lee. Yeah, you can we see know. the frustration, and you can see the heartache here as well. You know, what these folk have had to go through, and we're re really they're looking to you and and Morag and Hannah and everyone in that to make things better to improve their, um, their their basically their their lives and their homes and protect them. So I hope that goes right back because I'm sick to the back teeth talking about it uh, and looking for action. So hopefully you'll take that right back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's what the whole whole of this. I know it may seem long winded and we're not doing anything, but um, that's what this process is about, is trying to get some kind of resolution. And we understand the frustrations about the time of it. We have the frustrations as well. All the processes we have to go through and the hoops we have to go through. But unfortunately, that's all out of our hands. We can only do what we can and we we'll try and do it as best we can. But so I'd like to thank everyone for attending this meeting. And I look forward to seeing you all again at the next event next year. And we try and look at the options and have a better discussion then about what we can and can't do. Uh, Hopefully it'll be face to face, but it might still be like this, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah.
And Lee, I was just going to double check. Um, were you going to circulate the sort of email afterwards or? Um, people's email addresses. It doesn't give their email. I mean, address. I could pop it in the meeting chat. I'm just, um, you know, want to make sure that everyone get a chance to do that. Maybe I should share the screen just now and everyone could write I, it I down if they wanted it. The, just the, the email address. Yeah, I think just the email address, just, you know, to make sure that if there was anything that people felt, you know, afterwards you go away and you're like, oh, I thought of something else that, um, you know, you could you could send that on and uh, yeah, send on any of those extra photos that you have of all those events and that'd be useful. I think yes. that's really important to make sure that we understand it properly because, you know, some of these options that we're going to be looking at are going to be expensive and will need to go to Scottish Government for their funding and there's a whole process that that needs to involve and if we can have maximum confidence in what we're seeing from the modelling results and that really helps back up the whole the whole process so yeah anything else that you've got that could help that'd be good okay okay should i share the screen i don't know if everyone can see it in the chat oh, it's just flooding at falkirk.gov.uk it's hopefully quite straightforward Great, hopefully everyone's got that. I always feel like I miss miss out a, a dot somewhere or something. Yeah. Oh, I think Judith would like it. I'll just share it quickly just to make sure. Okay. Sorry, bear with me. There we go. So it's just that um, email address on the screen there that you should be able to see. Okay. I do I do appreciate everyone's time this evening and I'm sorry we can't provide you with quick answers to your issues. We do appreciate what you've been through um, and we are trying to do something about it. But like I say, we do have a process to follow that we have to stick to. But as as Maura and Hannah have said, any information you can provide, send us that email address. I'll pass it on to the project team. Um, for help. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. For your time, too. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Good night.